So now we're going to take a look at a legendary CPU, the Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600. Now, uh, the reason why this chip is kind of important is this was actually the first mainstream quad core chip to market. Um, now, Intel released this bad boy at $830 US, not really a mainstream price, but uh, about three months after that, they dropped it to 530 US. Again, there was no competition from AMD at the time, um, so they could just have rampant pricing. And then finally, in about July 2007, the AMD Phenoms came out, their quad core chips, and that forced Intel's hand, and the price of this chip dropped right down to $266 US retail. Uh, now, all those facts aside, I'm kind of curious, 10 years on, can this chip still run modern games? So let's go ahead and find that out, guys. Okay, guys, so Q6600, um, its stock speed is 2.4 gigahertz. I paired it with four gigabytes of DDR2 RAM and the GTX 670 two gig graphics card, which we've had in all of our previous videos where we're doing benchmarks. Now, all those points aside, at this point you're probably thinking, why is it running 4GB of RAM? Um, well, I'm kind of limited on the main board, so I only had a motherboard, a working motherboard with uh, two DIMM slots, unfortunately, so 4GB of RAM it is. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so CPU, I managed to overclock it to 3.2 GHz on this motherboard. Um, I was actually limited by the cooler sitting on it. I couldn't couldn't keep it under temps uh, any and anything above 3.2 GHz. Um, so, Benchmarks, what do we do with benchmarks? Well, um, we're doing uh, Doom, we're doing GTA 5, Fallout 4, F1 2015, and Battlefield 1. Now that's the gaming benchmarks. Um, and for synthetics, we're gonna have a look at Unigen Valley, uh, Cinebench R15, and the Ryzen Blender benchmark. So um, stick around and have a look at the benchmarks, guys. So the sock speeds were a bit subpar, but with the massive overclock we put on it, it made a big difference. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look at how this 10-year-old chip performs. All right, guys, so having a look at Fallout 4 first on the benchmark side, uh, you want to look at the bottom two graphs. That's where the Q6600 is sitting. Um, and at stock speeds, we saw mostly playable. Uh, that probably 18 frame minimum would be when a mini nuke was dropped on me and the, <laughs> the typical uh, game slowdown happens. Um, and uh, then with the overclock version, it was a slight bump up again. Uh, but overall, I felt like the RAM was holding back uh, this test's true result. So we'll have a look at this further into the benchmarks. Next up was Doom. And uh, this is probably a bit of a holdback again on the RAM side. Uh, so we saw the stock speeds actually was the slowest processor of the lot. Uh, with the overclock, it did jump right up to 64 frames, getting very close to the 5600K again. Um, but overall, I feel like this test was held back by that 4 gig of RAM. Next up, we had GTA 5, uh, and again, we didn't really see the results we expected on this one. Uh, by no means was it not playable at any point. Um, it was actually quite smooth, and I had no issues playing it at any point. Um, the stock clock was about on par with the 9600B, and the overclock version was a slight bump up, but generally it felt like it needed more RAM essentially to do well at this. F1 2015 was up next, and this was probably the first game where the Q6600 could really show its uh, true horsepower. Um, so this was definitely not rem limited by RAM, and uh, we saw the averages absolutely crushing the 9600B at stock speeds. Um, and it actually got very close to the 5600K at stock, and then with the overclock, uh, we were able to actually streak away into the lead. Um, and actually, at that 1080p Ultra, it was completely playable, um, which was impressive for a 10-year-old CPU. Uh, last but not least was Battlefield 1, and unfortunately, this was again held back by RAM. Uh, the Q6600 at stock uh, was just woeful. Uh, it didn't run very well, um, and it did lock up at moments. But again, I chalked this up to RAM. I don't chalk it up to CPU. Um, then with the overclock, it was able to actually maintain a playable level. Um, again, just beating out the 9600B, but I still think that that 4 gig is holding back this in the benchmarks. All right, moving on to synthetics. So uh, with Unigen Valley, you really want to look at the score. You don't really care too much about the frames per second. Um, so overall, 5600K was obviously the winner in this one, um, but tailed very closely by an overclocked 6600. Uh, and the stock version was a fair way behind the overclocked version, and then the, just everything crushed the 9600B, so 
good result all around for the 6600. All right, now we're into the CPU stuff, and this is where it gets really juicy. So, uh, a stock Q6600 uh, slotted right in between that 5600K and the 9600B, um, beating out the 9600B by about 10%. Um, and then the overclocked version just streaked away from everything and uh, was the quickest processor of the lot. So that was a really good result. All right, so last benchmark was the Ryzen Blender run and uh, the Q6600 just cleaned up here. Um, there's no other word for it. The stock version absolutely trounced uh, everything and then 25% uh, <laughs> faster on the overclocked version um, was just insane. So. All in all, good result for the 6600, and uh, let's move on to the conclusion. All right, guys, so conclusion time, what happened? Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, the Q6600 is a pass for me. Uh, so um, in its two trims, uh, in the non-overclock trim, I would say this chip is just a little bit too old to be doing 1080p gaming, but as soon as we put that overclock on it, this thing destroyed everything that we needed it to do. Um, and you know, for a 10 year old chip, considering you can pick these up for like 20 bucks or less, um, you would be almost insane not to use this chip if you're doing a second hand build or just doing it for grandma's PC or whatever. So in conclusion guys, great chip if you can get it overclocked. Um, and thanks for watching. So give it a like if you liked it, give it a dislike if you disliked it, leave a comment down the bottom if you have any questions or anything you want to say to me or any hate or love. Um, and check out the video up here if you want to have a look at our AMD review from last week. Um, and thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.